Well, Zoom updated, but I'm still black for whatever reason. Anyway.
the heart of the perfection of wisdom sutra. Arya Bhagavate Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya gem. Thus, I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on mass of vultures mountain on Rajagriha together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharadvadiputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage, your daughter of the lineage, who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on and up to and including no mind element, no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on and up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment and also no non-attainment, Shariputra. Therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration, without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata gate gate paragate parasangate bodhisoha. Yatta gate gate peragate perasam gate bodhisoha. Shariputra, the bodhisattva mazatva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration, commended the bodhisattva mazatva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Shard the Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, 
those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Your cameras, that would be great. I think all of you should be able to at this point. Hey, Connor, we can't hear you. You're saying something, but we can't hear you. Is it possible that your microphone is not turned on? Can you please uh, be able to talk to us instead of going through chat? Oh, you're gonna just keep typing away, aren't you? Yeah, okay. We'll just make facial expressions. Just take off your mask then. Because I have Lama's mic in the same room. Yeah, I understand that, but if he's not talking, then you don't have to worry about it. I'll stay there. Having two mics and yeah, so I can't have both mics on and this, this is why we don't have two mics in the same room at the same time because we get a lot of echo. So if you can turn on but your cameras, I would love it, please. Mama appreciates that very much. Thank you. I just finally managed to troubleshoot my camera. So. It looks kind of good upside down, Dirk. Maybe I should have left it that way. Very good. Yeah. We've done prayers. Okay, then we're good to go. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, 
So let, let's see how the sound is. Sound is okay. All right. Sounds so good. we have a new, so just noticing some of the differences. A little wider. Squares <laughs> that that screen here that I don't see. Okay, that's good. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, so we got Cleveland. Hi. Oh, yeah. I know. So is that Elizabeth in Cleveland? Can't tell. Is that? Can they hear me? Maybe people can't hear me. I can hear you. Oh, OK, good. All right. <clears throat> we, at this point, uh, should be very clear <clears throat> whether we uh, see Buddha nature as uh, ultimate or relative truth. Um, we should be very clear about what the Buddha qualities are and <clears throat> I think when we say sometimes uh, conventional truth, it sounds, um, you know, not as, uh, uh, for me, I like, I like to say relative truth, because then I'm reminded of uh, relativity and interdependence. <clears throat> Sometimes conventional is uh, used uh, particularly in translating prasankikya majimika to say everything is imputed. But even when we say everything is imputed, um, you know, if you put your hand on a hot stove, you'll get burned, right? So uh, when we say imputed, I guess I'm just jumping into tenets here, but you are all educated, right? So mm. when we say imputed, <laughs> when we say imputed, we don't mean that we're just saying, well, uh, since hot is imputed or burn is imputed, if I just say it's cool, then I won't burn my hand. No, you're going to burn your hand. Wouldn't it be nice to just say, oh, I can't, I'm just going to call it something else and then uh, I won't have a problem? You know, that's not what we mean, right? So uh, it, it means it's deeply embedded like, like that. So I don't know, like, uh, I, I'm not the translator, but I know how people use language. And sometimes imputed sounds like, well, we just, we're just changing names. So we're just calling something agua instead of water, right? Or we could just say it's, you know, we're not gonna call it water anymore. We're gonna call it, you know, uh, earth. And then it'll be earth because that's how we impute things. But it, that's not how we mean imputation and uh, prasangika, majimika. So uh, uh, all these, um, relative uh, powers and uh, energies and science and medicine uh, are, are not going to be changed just because we're calling something different. So, uh, <clears throat> so I just want to make that clear. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think any of you have really tested that probably, although that would be something I, I probably finger in like electrical sockets, uh, particularly like don't put the knife, while you're holding a metal knife, do not put it in the electrical socket. Um, so uh, everyone knows that's exactly what I did, like that kind of stuff. But we don't, at this point, we don't have to test the efficacy of the power of the a relative world. Um, <clears throat> the 
text we're looking at. Um, I'll just hold it up for your blessing, right? Uh, so uh, this is uh, on the cover is Acharya Bhavadika, who was uh, was a Madhimikan, but um, didn't believe uh, or propounded the idea that actually uh, we can make some uh, assertions that make sense and that uh, there, there's something existing from the side of phenomena that does um, uh, make sense to differentiate it from other phenomena, right? Whereas uh, since you've all read Nagarjuna and Tsongkhapa, Chandrakirti, so forth, then uh, very strict consequential school, President Kika said, you know, like really those things don't uh, even exist conventionally from their own side, which is very radical, isn't it? Isn't that, that the consequential school of Madhyamika, it doesn't sound very radical to you. It should, it should still feel like, wow, okay, I, I get that, that um, the schools see that as the highest expression. Uh, some schools see that, but like, that's, that's really, really weird if we really take that, you know, and, and try to work with that. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about the book and the tenets from the standpoint of Swatantrika, in other words, uh, a little different viewpoint like that. So I don't, I don't know how many people have actually uh, have the, uh, the book of study of Swatantrika uh, put together by Donna Lopez or not. Oh, okay, yay. <clears throat> Um, uh, he's a, an interesting uh, person and, um, you know, done things on the Heart Sutra and um, wrote an interesting book called, I believe, Prisoners of, of Shangri-La, um, kind of a polemical book about how different translators have distorted or not distorted or presented the, a false idea of uh, Tibet or Tibetan scholarship. Um, but uh, I, I also kind of like him because uh, he taught at Middlebury College where I went to school, um, but I, he wasn't there when I was there. In fact, the Dalai Lama um, has gone to Middlebury. Uh, they, even then they were very interested in uh, Asian studies. So uh, that's when I did my thesis on uh, Nagarjuna and the Karikas. So <clears throat> I think it's a pretty easy read. <laughs> it should be uh, able to be read at this point. But, um, <clears throat> and all these, I also want to just present it from uh, academic scholarly point of view, but what does this have to do with um, our actual meditation in life like that? <clears throat> the tenets which um, you should be familiar with at this point are the other action in India. This is uh, a thousand years later, trying to determine what, what they really said uh, and how they understood them. So with everything, it is seen through a certain lens and uh, the lens that uh, were, you know, two scholars, practitioners who we've already run into. So um, 
it is through looking at Sotong to go through uh, a Gila program like that. <clears throat> there are, uh, you know, so Tantrika presentation of tenants from other schools and, um, uh, you know, I've mentioned like Yipang uh, Rinpoche and uh, uh, you know, that he was interested in debating with Gillard School. So we'll get into that at some point. But uh, to understand that the Tibetans, just like us, have had uh, a lot of and lamas and traditions, and they've been trying to sort them out. <clears throat> a sorting out procedure that we do on a very daily basis, uh, which is mostly psychological, but has uh, also the capacity to be dharmic, is, is this. A lot of times when we're having struggles with people, which if we're paying attention, um, uh, it should be every day, uh, we're, we're having to make some differentiation between our stuff, our issues, and someone else's issues. So we're thinking, are we projecting that on them? Or is that the way they really are? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or is it a mix? Insightful or self-investigatory? We're, we're going to wonder. We're, you could say just kind of regular normals, just figure, well, that's the way people are, or the way I see people is um, just the way they are, you know? I, just call it like I see it, and that person's an idiot, or they're greedy, or they're manipulative, or they're codependent, or they're silly. And I see those qualities as clear as I see the tree or the hand in front of my face, that those people, you know, <laughs> have those qualities inherently, right? But uh, we do some uh, Dharma practice, and, you know, we begin to question that a little bit, right? We might go another extreme which is to think all the horrible qualities exist inherently in us, right? So that um, we would be a little bit like, um, somewhat like Horace and Miracles, right? So is, uh, any new agers here? So do you remember Horace and Miracles? <laughs> I think Elizabeth is going, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay, so um, I never really totally did the Course in Miracles, miracles but just hung out with um, of course miracle people so the general thing in course miracles was it, you know see something and somebody else uh, usually something you don't like that means that's a um, dream all the issues that are me the other people they're wonderful and perfect and I'm just you know projecting my stuff on them so we probably know that's not entirely true either. But uh, the difficult part is uh, when we get some sophistication, we do some dharma, we do some psychotherapy, and we realize, you know, there's this problem going on with both of us, but we don't really know, you know, it's a tangle, right? It's a tangle. I think if we're honest, we'd say that, you know, we're, we, we have, you know, these arguments or opinions that are going back and forth and not really sure like where that person is projecting or where we're projecting and what's what. So that's where actually, if we're um, reading this material and meditating on this material and debating this material, and listening to this material, uh, it actually can help us uh, sort out uh, not just uh, ultimate truths, but uh, relative truths as well. Uh, I was fond and still am of a book that came out maybe 30 years ago. Um, 
which uh, some of you may be familiar with called uh, Plato, not Prozac. Is anybody familiar with that book? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I was a philosophy and religion major uh, um, when I was in college, uh, quite anti psychological, actually. And so I ate up Play Doh and else. So uh, this, this book is saying, well, of course, sometimes we need Prozac, but most of a lot of the problems that people have are you know philosophical problems problems of meaning or problems of language uh, problems of purpose and that uh, uh, it's not just going to be uh, problems of China or the philosophical problems which uh, people have wrestled with for millennia and um, they're well. They're kind of real problems, and they take real uh, logical investigation and intuitive investigation, mental investigation, emotional investigation, like that. So, I I'd like to suggest that you know uh, the Buddha Studies program we're doing, Buddha Dharma program, uh, has a bit of that flavor. But as some of you know, I I do believe that uh, people can meditate and medicate. So, and uh, that good psychotherapy can uh, aid our Dharma uh, practice uh, a lot. Um, but like everything, maybe, maybe bad psychotherapy will impede it. But uh, we don't have any bad psychotherapists in Sangha. We just have good ones, right? So like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'd like to have people look at the tenets on the meditation really from these uh, interpersonal and uh, kind of kitchen table um, issues uh, that uh, come up every day. Um, so how do we find the middle way and how do we adjust ourselves knowing that actually the whole environment as a series and a matrix of causes and conditions, but where do we find the center? Where do we find the middle way? So uh, that's why these teachers are uh, in areas in the past have taught uh, not so we can uh, uh, be just right um, because in the recovery or in therapy, uh, we can say you can, uh, either be happy or you can be right. Um, and sometimes uh, they say you, you can either be married or you can be right. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the study of uh, the tax is so that we have tools to study our own emotions, our own mind, our own awareness. Uh, to be able to take uh, this middle position. So in Dharma, even though people might have vastly different um, formulations, they might be Yogacharans, they might be Hinayana Sotrantikas, they might be Madhimikans or Zogchenpas or um, Chakpa Chempas, Mahamudra people, uh, we're all gonna say, everyone says, you know, we're, uh, we're after the middle way, right? We, here's here's why our way is the middle way, isn't that so? In our reading, haven't you found that out? That we're all going to say, well, this is the correct understanding of relative and ultimate truth. This is the correct understanding of self and phenomena that leads to the madhyama pratipa, the uh, the middle path, right? <clears throat> like that. So um, particularly um, with this study book and uh, the questions and discussions, uh, we should have enough sophistication now that we can actually uh, take some of these uh, tenets or precepts or guidance uh, um, and pithy instructions and uh, bring up actual uh, life situations. <clears throat> um, so uh, sometimes in 
uh, uh, Mahamudra retreats, which we recently did, but we didn't have enough time. But in, in longer retreats, uh, uh, sometimes teachers uh, ask people to um, like maybe you do a week and then, and then you take a day off, okay? So the day off is not just the day off, like, oh, great, now I meditate more. The day off is, uh, you know, you, you go into town and you, you do daily life and you notice how your mind works like that. <clears throat> uh, I took some of those day off, some, some were in my many retreats, some were authorized and some weren't. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, uh, there's uh, the many stories like that um, that teachers tell. Like, okay, so they're they were doing Mahamudra retreat, and the teacher says, "Okay, we're not meeting tomorrow, so I want you to go into town and you know have a cup of tea." You know, that's you know code for just going and do what you want to do, have fun, mess around. Um, but uh, some people thought, oh, he's just saying that for the lower level students who, um, you know, need to let off some steam. We're, we're higher level students, so we're, we're gonna stay here and use this opportunity to practice. So uh, then they completed the retreat, maybe a month later, maybe three months later, uh, and uh, the teacher said this, the students that uh, went into town during the breaks and noticed uh, the nature of their awareness, how uh, self arose uh, and self dissolved, how phenomena arose and dissolved. Uh, these people gained some uh, realization. The people that just uh, stayed all the time in retreat uh, have no work to do. <laughs> That's kind of encouraging, isn't it? Like that. Um, but uh, when when you go into town, you see, like, um, so to speak, we have relationships. Uh, um, we we actually have to have not just uh, the idea, like, okay, I'm just going to stay in pure awareness. Um, we, we also have to have some uh, uh, relative guidelines too. So um, as people know, I'm up early, I'm doing uh, my practice, but um, it just has a wide range from uh, Lam Rim to uh, Dzogchen and I do all that. But uh, as I'm heading out the door, maybe some people can remember what, what, what's the last thing I say to myself before I kind of start my day? What do you think? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> this is your time to speak up, so I guess. Maybe I, I'm sure I've told some people. Yeah, that's true. So uh, Matthew Q said, well, uh, I don't say try not to get angry. I said, Okay, don't get angry. Don't get angry today. Okay. That's very conventional, a very relative truth, right? But uh, it, you know, you think like after doing uh, Dharna, I would be kind of like just in this, like, oh, nothing's going to piss me off today. But I, I have to speak to, you know, relative truth, like, okay, it just, uh, there are probably uh, five or six or seven things that are, uh, um, you know, uh, make me angry, but I, I can feel the anger, but I don't want to like act it out, right, like that. But when, on the days when I don't warn myself, uh, then I know I'm more at risk like that. So the tenants are like that. Uh, uh, they're the, um, I like to think of them as the uh, philosophic underpinnings uh, of, you know, uh, of the suture approach, right? 
uh, for me, they're uh, analogous to uh, Mahamudra and Dzogchen uh, pith instructions and uh, direct instructions from one teacher like that. Um, because carrying, uh, carrying direct instructions around is not in contradiction to resting in pure awareness, right? So uh, as we know from the last retreat, our people were, uh, uh, thoughts are not the problem. Uh, they're self-liberated, right? So in Mahamudra and Dzogchen, we're, we're not, we're not blaming the foot soldiers of the mind. We're not blaming the pawns of the, the mind. We're not blaming the thoughts. We're looking directly at Rigpa. We're looking directly at the nature of mind itself. Isn't that so? <laughs> so why, why blame the, the foot soldiers of the mind? Why blame uh, discursive thinking and that kind of thing? Um, that's just uh, pointing the finger, so like that. So. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in Asia, they would say, um, uh, particularly like when I was studying uh, Korean Zen, uh, Sung San, I would give some answer to a koan. He would say, uh, the dog runs after the bone. So if you throw, this is the idea. I don't know what's true because I haven't tried it. But I know if you throw something, a dog will go after what you throw. Isn't that so? But a lion uh, will come after the person that's thrown it. <laughs> so that's, I don't know, I haven't tried that, but uh, that's the idea. So, uh, Ati Yoga and thoughts, we're not condemning them, they're self liberated, they're recognized as uh, manifestations of mind. So we go after you know, ultimate mind right away. Uh, we still need uh, the Lama's precepts, it's called. We still need the pith instructions. Uh, you know, there's uh, no teacher that I've ever met, and I like interviewing teachers um, who have said, no, I, I don't need, I don't need, I, I just have completely open mind. I had any, um, you know, uh, uh, pith instructions in my mind, any, uh, you know, fundamental precepts like, you know, Zogchen precepts or Mahamudra or even just regular precepts. So um, when, when I say get up in the morning and say, don't get angry, uh, this is a uh, teaching I received from one of my lamas. And I wonder if anybody can guess who it was. I don't know, maybe I've talked about it. <laughs> Not Chodan Rinpoche, but that's a good guess. Um, uh, Chadgood Rinpoche. So uh, he's <laughs> uh, so the wonderful thing that I'm I'm hoping to uh, you know pass on to everyone that's close in the sangha here is to have these kind of conversations. So um, when uh, Chagur Rinpoche used to come into town. Uh, sometimes he would come with the Sangam, with uh, Jane, you know, Khandro, um, uh, uh, Chagur Khandro, and uh, I would, I would, I always ask these kind of therapist questions, like, um, how, how are you guys getting along? <laughs> and, uh, you know, Jane's a wonderful teacher. I shouldn't call her Jane, just, uh, you know, Chad Good Contro. Uh, and she would say, what do you think she would say? Anybody want Well, uh, she didn't say just from she gets mad because that would just be saying it's just him. She would say, you know, we, we, have, we have some arguments like every other couple, right? So, uh, uh, Chagur Rinpoche was an enormously open, fantastic Dzogchen master, had absolutely nothing to say. That was just great, totally transparent. So he would say, you know, I have to get up. <laughs> 
So, uh, you know, I think if uh, Chad Goodrum Shea could say that, then I can, I can try that too, and it works. So, so that's, that's, that's kind of a, a tenant, right? So just like, uh, you know, we're, tenants we're looking at, these are short, pithy ways of trying to condense uh, uh, the Buddha's meaning, right? Like that. So uh, they, because from the academic de and debate side, uh, sutta style of teaching, they're, they're in this kind of debate thing, right? So we shouldn't think like, oh, they're, they're lower. It's just this particular style of doing practice on a uh, sutra kalana level, right? So, uh, but it's analogous to what we're doing at the higher teachings too, like that. So uh, all the uh, direct instructions are meant to be helpful and skillful and are meant for a particular audience. So uh, the tenants are not just, are looking at Swatantrika, why do we have to know this stuff? Is that it should bring out uh, what our process is right now. Because uh, we'd say, yeah, I believe in that. That's, you know, Mekin, right? I don't know if any of you have been you know, reading this and go, that's it, that, that's my club, you know? Uh, these guys are right, you know, nailed it. So people, last guy I'm a prasangika guy you know um, but it's humbling because <laughs> uh, if we're really doing our practice um, then when when we're reading somebody else and delving into it we should see like th there's there's some good arguments on this other side too right there's some really profound arguments too so uh, that you know that's why we're studying like this to appreciate like Okay, you know, I see, I see your point given uh, what your premises are or where you're going or the evidence you're bringing forth. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, maybe prosecutor defender kind of dialogue. So um, we get to see how, uh, you know, we have held on to views. We get to see that uh, even uh, if, if we think we have the right view, we don't have to get stuck on being right. So like that, but um, I'm very interested in, um, you know, like certain statements that the Buddha made that said, I have no views, right? No fixed views, right? And that could easily become just kind of, kind of bullshitty relativity just go with the flow, but uh, we have to actualize that, I think, in our uh, own uh, practice. Uh, so when we see that, we're not saying that um, there isn't uh, a practice in enlightenment, there isn't nature mind, where the views usually mean this, like um, we're, we're taking one side or the other. Right. You know, I'm on this side and they're on that side. So, yeah, it's it's very, um, you know, family situation or home situation or work situation when uh, people come and say, you know, this person did this and this person that did that. Um, then you go, oh, wow, that person did this and that person did that. And then hours <laughs> later, don't, Lama, Lama, don't you think that person that did that and that person that did that should, is wrong and, you know, that da, da, da. So, um, uh, of course, if, if I'm doing it correctly, I think, uh, I might be annoying equally to both parties, uh, but it's very hard to uh, stay in the middle and not uh, take sides, don't you think? Very difficult. So, uh, when we're doing academic study, um, we learn that the intellect is very powerful and at the same time, very misleading. And if we have a take sides kind of uh, uh, approach, which is samsara actually, um, it's really easy to use intellect and you know, 
know, all kinds of things to our advantage. So by studying, uh, we're not just here to learn right answers or be good debaters, but to learn like, oh, here's where we get trapped. And here's where, what it feels like to actually uh, be in the middle of the mandala without uh, taking sides. But as you know, like in your own lives, uh, when we don't take sides, um, and we say, well, we really care for you both. <laughs> that still takes a lot of guts, doesn't it? So um, some people here have been through the situation where um, you uh, have siblings that are arguing, right? So I, I have, so, you know, <laughs> calling up and uh, I say, you know, I, I just, don't want to take sides with you guys. You know, I want you to work it out. And then they get mad at me, right? <laughs> <laughs> or when couples come and, you know, listen to one, listen to the other. But uh, the studying the tenets and dharmas to see how uh, we can skillfully use that energy of taking sides without getting caught in it. So, you know, the great teachers, like, of course, the Buddha, um, uh, uh, in our recent memory, uh, and uh, and Lama and Karmapa, you know, and what's so interesting about them when um, you get a chance to meet, if you actually get a chance to dialogue, is taking sides. Even even when you're just kind of uh, talking to weather or something, you know, the, the seems like it's really weird. They're just like mountains and they don't, they're not, you know, because usually we're always saying, you know, how do you like the food? Uh, do you like the food? You know, we're always, people ask teachers this, like, do you think the food's better in Sacramento or in India? You know, <laughs> or, <laughs> what do you think? You know, do you? You know, do you think Tibetans are more enlightened than Americans? What do you think? You know, a lot of times people ask lamas these questions, you know, and they roll their eyes and try to stay in the middle, right? Uh, but even when we're talking about, um, you know, mundane things, when we're meeting with, uh, you know, teachers, uh, there's a sense of being in the center. So, uh, and that's most difficult when we're doing administrative work, of course. And at some point we have to say, well, we're gonna paint it this color and we're gonna go with this contractor. So uh, we, we, when we study tenants and then Muhammad and Dzogchen, we try to uh, say how we use discriminating wisdom. So there's uh, jhana or yeshe, and then there's prajna or Arab. So we have complete uh, non-dual wisdom, uh, Yeshe, which everyone who's taken refuge has that name as they do. And then we have Sharab or Pajna, which means that we learn to make distinctions without taking sides. So that's uh, a high level practice, isn't it? So um, now we have talked too long, um, but there's some, uh, I know we started a little late, uh, but if some people have some uh, questions, comments, or <laughs> so I don't know. Like, is that Dima, or are you just kind of are you saying hello? You're just saying hello, or do you have a question? She, she, no, no questions this time. Okay, I have some. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, well, you're, you're, you're. You're turning up a lot of things, uh, speaking, and uh, one of them is just uh, something that happened when I was reading Mipam. And, yeah. uh You're you're evoking that of uh, just just because somebody says they're professing, just because I say that I'm asangika or asvatan or whatever, doesn't mean that everything I say actually fits into that philosophy. So, you know, I can say, oh, I'm a prasangika. Oh, I agree with him because he's prasangika. 
And then you, then Meepom will come around and say, well, that, you know, those three things there are actually spot on trees that you're, you're calling yourself. You're saying that they're, they're processing geek, but they're not. And uh, that, that really will tear apart a position really fast if you realize that the things that you think might not even be the things you think they are. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, you know. So um, the uh, Vietnamese Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, coming from the Chinese Zen tradition, very much in the Flower Ornament Sutra and Huayan philosophy. So they like to talk about uh, interpenetration, and then he likes to talk about how everything is made up of elements that are not it. So he used the example of paper, right? So when he sees a piece of paper. Uh, he sees a tree and he sees water and he sees processing. So the paper is made up of non-paper elements. So um, Mipan is very much like that. He will point out um, how, uh, you know, even Tsongkhapa is using uh, uh, arguments that he's, he's taken examples and arguments kind of from his opponents and using them maybe unconsciously or maybe consciously, right? So uh, these, this is high level practice and scholarship where people respect each other enough to read each other actually. And then to say, you know, this is really interesting but that argument you're using is, um, uh, you're using my own argument to try to refute me, you know? So I uh, got you there. So um, this is an interesting point that um, I, I like to work with is, uh, in my own practice, not just study, but to talk academics tonight. So, um, uh, Jim Shea Lama Sokapa is really interested in uh, trying to get a really totally um, consistent kind of um, view going, right? So, um, you know, very uh, kind of making an airtight case, right? You know, so like that. So um, that's a particular style where, you know, trying to really um, uh, say, sense, say as little as possible because person gigas don't, they just like to say, okay, not affirming, you know, you could just say the whole thing is like, uh, not affirming negative, okay, done. <laughs> so you're not gonna catch me saying anything else. It's, that's it, guys. Not, you know, uh, you know uh, nothing exists inherently from its own side, not affirming negative, done. <clears throat> but um, of course, in a real debate, um, you, you end up drawing people out and you, you have to end up saying more than that, don't you, right? Um, there's an equal problem in being sometimes too, um, uh, too uh, syncretic so you, you kind of have a stew. So you, you, know, you kind of get uh, mixed up with what your own argument is. So from kind of, I could say maybe objective scholarly point of view, I, I enjoy reading Lama Sakava to see if he's able to pull that off. You know, take these diverse texts. And then uh, you know, in the last 20, 30 years, in the last 10 years, some wonderful translations of, you know, Lama Mipam, who is an incredible scholar and a practitioner, kind of really an auto dictate. And, you know, can he pull it off? Can, can he, you know, take these variety of teachings and uh, show, you know, how they all work together? Um, and it's the same way with the present Dalai Lama, uh, who's very syncretic and we may you know, is, is he able to make a convincing way of showing how uh, some different lineages and language systems uh, can work together? Or, you know, does it, is it too much of a souffle, right? So uh, we have to, you know, uh, revere these wonderful teachers, but at the same time, the tradition is only kept alive through, you know, examining on a really, uh, uh, with good tools, like, are they able to accomplish the goals they set out to do, right? So you don't get lost in the weeds of each this little argument, but, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, it's a little bit, I don't know anything about law except having <laughs> go to court, but so is, are we able to, you know, if we're a prosecutor, are we win the case or defense? Are we getting our client off? Is it being successful? Is the Buddha being successful and, you know, making his pitch? Is, is it a believable? Are you believing it? Will you put it into action, right? So uh, we, we, we can be both religious and uh, secular and uh, devotional and academic all at the same time. That's the true glory of the tradition. And, you know, these incredible teachers like, um, of course, had the ability to meet Dujim Rinpoche, you know, who had that breadth of scholarship and a playfulness about at the same time. So uh, uh, I need to go home a little early today. So uh, I hope this time has been useful for you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I really like tenants, so it's kind of funny, but uh, one of the things that I want to say, I'm really delighted that um, Elizabeth Zima is interested in uh, Abhidharma as much as I am. I know Dirk is too, but um, uh, Abhidharma and tenants is the true geekdom of yeah. scholastic dharma. <laughs> uh, it's not all of it because there is the, um, when we get to it, which we will, uh, the meditation manuals are the true yogic geekdoms. And uh, I'm looking forward to be able to get to that place with everybody. So uh, uh, maybe we should do closing prayers like that. May I make an <laughs> announcement first, Lama? Oh yeah, thank you. The moon. Uh, yeah, we have lunar practice tonight. And I know that I sent an invitation out on meet and then we've got on the calendar Zoom. So I'm gonna run both of them and uh, try to figure out which one we should actually use. <laughs> in the process because I <laughs> yeah, good idea. I don't know. So <laughs> either one though, and I'll make sure you connect with me. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for continuing the practice and staying up late. Uh, one of the reasons uh, Sabine and I bought our house is that uh, the windows are aligned. So you can see uh, the moon come up. So the moon comes up, you know, it's kind of cathedral ceilings with lots of windows, which are, uh, you know, used up heat, but then the, the moonlight will come right into the house. And it's cool. All right. Omaha. So who's Umze? Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezig, Tenzinjatsu, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokit Teshwara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Sunkapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losangrapa, I make request at your holy feet. Good work. All right. Thank you, Seattle and Cleveland and Pennsylvania and everyone who's here. Yeah, appreciate it. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Lama.
Thank you, Lama.